a maiden with a big bear trap. That ain't very romantic, is it? Not too. Uh, I've been paddling for two days, and I ain't coaxed a tune out of this thing yet. You think that's going to give you an edge with the ladies? We're going to New Orleans, ain't we? I don't expect you to understand, you being a backwoodsman. But if they're in gingham, you got to sing them. Hey, if they're in gingham, you got to sing them. Ruin them if you don't tune them. That's pretty good, ain't it? You sing that under some windows, I know, and you're going to get scalded for sure. <laughs> you're probably right. Hey, how about this? I asked her daddy for her hand, said give it to me this minute. I traded a cow for my true love, for good measure I threw in a spinet. I know it's not going to be good for your plunking hand, but if you put that thing down and start paddling, we're going to get there a little faster. Daniel, ain't an ounce of romance in your soul. <laughs> I'm stuck on a New Orleans lass. I met at the old Monte Grass. She twirled her umbrella, bumped into this fella who rode in from Cumberland Pass. Some place, isn't it, Daniel? Thank you. Sure is, Josh. You know, I heard a fella talking to the hotel clerk, and he said there were 12,000 people living in New Orleans already. Just seems impossible. You know it? All these people crowded into one little old bitty place. I'm sorry. You know, I, I got a feeling that you could live here for a year and still not meet everybody. You know something, Josh? I hadn't thought much about it. <laughs> You could probably take Boonsboro, put it across the street, people pass it all day long, we we'll never even see it. More than likely, but that's all the more reason for living in Boonsboro. Oh, I wouldn't want to live here. But you got to admit it's a good place to visit. I'm not going to fight you on that. <coughs> oh, lady, <laughs> be careful. Where are you going? I'm in here with you. Oh, it's those cutthroats who are following me. Now, do you permit me to... Wait. Now, that's not going to happen to you, as long as we're here. Uh, uh, now, since these streets are free and all, suppose you just find another one to play on, all right, little fella? And suppose you keep your overlong American nose out of our business. And that goes for your fur-hatted friend, too. Now, get out of my way before I get out. out. He's busy. Try me. Lamouche, Lamouche. A bientôt, America. <laughs> Just when it's starting to get good, too, huh, Dan? That big one's got a head of cast iron. Wonder why they ran off. I don't know, but I'm sure glad he did. She's gone, too. a big man with an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Gentle Boone was a man, just a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty oak tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old and to the heel of his raw high shoe. Rippin'est, roarin'est, fightin'est man The frontier ever knew She just run off without saying goodbye, thank you, or anything. Well, maybe she remembered something she had to do. But why would those two fellas be chasing her? Josh, you've asked me a question I can't answer. Uh, bonjour, Monsieur Bou, Monsieur Clément. You have returned so soon. Mr. Hamel. Your business was concluded satisfactorily? Very well, thank you. As a matter of fact, it went so well, we'll probably be uh, leaving tomorrow morning. Oh, that is too bad. Uh, good for you, of course, but bad for me. <laughs> uh, it is such a pleasure to have you as a guest. Something is wrong, Monsieur Clément? I can be of some assistance. <laughs> no, not unless you're good at solving riddles. Uh, riddles, Monsieur? 
I think we'll just take the key and a good hot bath. Josh here has had a rough day. Ah, but of course, monsieur. <laughs> Number 12. Thank you. Come on, Josh, you've been waiting for something to happen, and it has. Mm. I think you can stand a little fresh and up make you feel better. Well, you ain't exactly no lily of the valley yourself. <laughs> This way. I almost hope she refuses to tell me where she hid it. There it is, 11. Mademoiselle Jaunet, this is the proprietor. I have some lovely flowers for your room. Should I watch the hallway for the girl while you search the room? No, help me search the bureau drawers. If you don't beat all, just when I thought I'd never see you again, and you turn up. What'd you ask the man at the desk for my... Wait a minute. I don't remember giving you my name. Oh, no, monsieur. Uh, but I asked him, asked him for the handsome young American. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna quarrel with you. I might say there's something wrong with your eyesight, but... Oh, I'm sorry the way I look. I just stepped out of the tub. Oh, uh, please, monsieur, uh... Uh, Clements, Josh Clements. <laughs> Monsieur Clements, I will return later. No, no, no. You, you, you don't have to do that. You just stay right where you are, and I'll get over here behind this watch, but call it, and uh, uh, we can go right on talking. Yeah, I was saying to Dan, that's fellers with me this morning. I said it's kind of a shame the way you had to run off. I kind of thought, well, <laughs> you know, you're in New Orleans a couple of days, and you sell your skins, and you kind of like to meet folks, and. Uh, <laughs> you still there? Oh, oui, monsieur. I'm still here. My name is Eugenia. Oh, that's a that's a pretty name, Eugenie. Merci, monsieur. You can call me Josh. Oh, Josh. I hope you never run into them fellers again. I mean, I hope they didn't run into you. Oh, no. What they want? I mean, not that it's any of my business, but... Oh, they're from my guardian. Um, you see, I'm of age, of course, but uh, they do not want me to receive my inheritance. Oh, that's that's too bad. You need any more help, though? You just say the word, Eugenie. Oh, uh, maybe I can go talk to him. I mean, your guardian. Oh, that's very kind of you, Monsieur. But only what I would expect of someone so gallant. <laughs> but I didn't do anything that anybody else wouldn't have done. <laughs> Ah, you look so handsome. I do? Mm. <laughs> like I said a while ago, I think there's something wrong with your vision, but there ain't nothing wrong with mine. And you, you sure are. I'm, I mean, that's a pretty dress. Merci, monsieur. Uh, I have so much to thank you for. Uh, not only your compliments, but uh, the way you so gallantly defended me. Any time. Uh, look, look, I bet if we looked, we could find a nice place to have some lunch. You know that? Look what we have here, Thibault. 
the interfering backwoodsman. Just to make things a little more even. Listen, American, we have no quarrel with you. The girl. You mean the one you was chasing this morning? Well, you're going to have to look someplace else. I don't keep her in my shirt pocket. Now, this rifle's getting heavy. Either I'm going to use it or I'm going to put it down. The decision's up to you. Good thinking. Oh. They're gone. Everything's all right. You were magnificent, Josh. Daniel. Uh, Eugenie, this is my friend Daniel Boone. Daniel, this is Miss Mamselle Eugenie. Uh, Jeanne. Enchanté, Monsieur Boone. Miss Jonay, uh, I just saw the uh, two men that were chasing Miss Jonay. If they don't know if she's in here. The guardian, they work for her guardian. I'm sure Monsieur Boone is not interested in my troubles, Josh. Well, that's not so, Miss Jonay, if uh, we can be of some help. See, Eugenie? Well, Daniel, her guardian's trying to steal her inheritance. Well, uh, have you been to the authorities? Oh, well, uh, no. Because you understand, it's a family matter. I see. Uh, I have imposed upon you long enough, gentlemen. Well, I thought we was going to have lunch. Oh, another time, perhaps, Josh. For supper? Uh, we shall see. You know, the, them two fellas might still be out there. Well, I'm right across the hall from you, and I'm sure they will not try anything again. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur. Val, do we just have to go home tomorrow? Well, Mr. Phelps is going to pay us for our first, first thing in the morning. Yeah. We just now agreed and arrived at a price. We could uh, stay here in the city. And, of course, with the things happening to you that are bound to happen to you, I would say there was an excellent chance of your ending up without a shilling for a whole season's worth of trapping. All right. Look, uh... Well, now, Josh, you are a grown young man, and I will not stand in your way if you want to stay here in the city and spend your money. Oh, hmm. <laughs> Boy, she sure is a pretty young thing, no, yes, isn't she? Yes, she is. Man, the way she talks and acts, you just feel like you want to help her. Mm-hmm. You know what? I might just sing her song tonight. But I'm going to do some tuning first. This thing don't sound right. The American may know something. The girl could have confided in him. I can make him talk. No. I will do it my way. Where are you going, my pretty little miss? My little brown-eyed daisy. If I don't find me a young man's son, I think I'm going crazy. A rink dum mink dum dee 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 um A rink dum mink dum dee dee do you mind telling me something? How do you expect to go out and eat and see the sights in your bare feet? Well, I don't, but I do expect to get a good night's sleep. Daniel, what's got into you? How often do you get to New Orleans anyway? Where's your spirit of adventure? Over in Mr. Phelps' store with the bales of fur that we toted in here. Now, you just going out and see the sights and sounds here in New Orleans, and I'm kind of sorry you got to do it by yourself. Oh, I don't have to do it by myself. You heard Miss Eugenie say she's going to have supper with me. Well, that's not exactly the way I recall it. Seems to me like she said, we shall see. Well, that's good enough for me. And don't wait up for me. Who is it? It's me, Josh Clements. You ready for supper? Uh, uh, no, I have uh, the mal de tête. Uh -huh. uh, well, a headache. Uh, I'm so sorry. Oh, me too. Uh, uh, maybe if you got out and got some fresh air, it might make you feel better. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll just lie down. Oh, but you go ahead to supper, and uh, perhaps later I will feel more like going out. All right. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be back in about an hour. All right, John. Yeah. 
Evening. Uh, if you're uh, looking for Josh, I thought he was with you. Oh, Monsieur Bon, what you must think of me entering your room without being invited. I had a terrible headache, and I told Josh that when I felt better, I would come over. Well, that's perfectly all right, mademoiselle. Oh, uh, I, I did not know, of course. I did not even dream that you would be here. Uh, when you see Josh, would you tell him that my headache is much better? Well, if you would like to find him, he's probably in that fancy eating place over there across the street. Oh, well, uh, merci, monsieur. Well, I'm sure glad you got rid of that old headache so fast. Oh, well, they come and they go. It seems a shame that a pretty young thing like you ought to have to worry like that. Oh, do you think I'm pretty, Josh? Pretty? Why, you're prettier than dew on a whole field of daisies. Oh, no one has ever told me that before. Well, it's about time somebody did. Well, when one has been raised in a convent, the world seems so new. Sometimes I feel so helpless. You need a man to take care of you. Ah. Oh. But who can one trust? My mother superior told me about men. Well, there's all kinds of men, you know. But you are different, Josh. But I have no right to take up so much of your time. You did not come to New Orleans to become involved with me. Well, that's been the nicest thing about all of it. Hey, why don't we see some of New Orleans? Ah, there are cafes and bistros right down the street. Well, let's go. After we finish our dinner toss. Oh, I couldn't eat another bite. I'll just drink my coffee. Who is it? Police, monsieur. I'm sorry to disturb you, monsieur Boone. This is... Captain Rocla, our service. Well, in that case, uh... Allez-vous-en. If you excuse me. Would you have a seat? No, merci. I wasn't aware that we'd uh, busted any of your laws. Oh, no, monsieur. Far from it. I only want information. Uh, pardon. Information. Information? Information of, about what? You have heard of uh, Benvenuto Cellini? No, I can't say that I have. The world's greatest gold and silver smith. Born 1500, died 1571. Today, his smallest work commands a fortune. A fortune. The Cellini pendant, uh, pendant, belongs to His Majesty Louis of France. It is fashioned of diamonds and pearls and gold. It was stolen from the royal collection two months ago. We traced it here to New Orleans. Worth a lot, is it? Conservatively, 100,000 of your American dollars, 400,000 francs. A tidy sum, no? Yes, yes it is. But uh, I don't see what... Uh... We have reason to believe that uh, one of the thieves who brought the Cellini pendant to New Orleans was a woman who calls herself Eugenie Jaunet. You know her. Uh, no. Met her. Are you going to arrest her? Our interest is first and foremost recovery of the Cellini pendant. And the last, the Genève woman had accomplices. Two men. Uh, one uh, taller than me, the other uh, much shorter. Exactly. You have seen them. Well, you could say that. Our information is that the Genève woman had stolen the Cellini pendant from the accomplices so that they, too, pursue her. Well, I will disturb you no more, monsieur. Perhaps I will return to talk to your friend. Uh, he is out. He is. We policemen have our informers. Is he attracted to Mademoiselle Jaunet? I would not blame him. Well, you uh, might ask him yourself. Indeed, you have been most helpful. Mr. 
this is the wonderful time of the day in New Orleans. When the sun goes down and the breeze is just coming up across the river. All the lamps and candles are lit. Is it not gay, Josh? Yes, it is. <laughs> you sure don't find nothing like this in Boonesboro, I'll tell you that. What are you thinking about? Uh, just remembering how soon I gotta go back. But I'll say one thing, meeting you has made this a beautiful trip. You get to New Orleans often? This is my first visit. Is that right? Well, where'd you say your guardian was from? Oh, do you know this part of New France well, Josh? Natchez Trace, about all I know. Well, it's up country New Orleans, a place called Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau. Oh, look, how pretty. Your guardian, he wouldn't hurt you, would he? Oh, to get his hands on my money, I'm afraid he would do anything. What's his name? Just in case Dan and I might run into him sometime. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. How soon will you have to leave New Orleans, Josh? Dan said uh, tomorrow. But we might be able to squeeze another day out of it, though. It is the custom when new friends part that the man give the woman a gift, a keepsake, a memento of their meeting. I think it's a good idea. I did real good at first, and I'd be glad to buy you a keepsake. Oh, no, it, it, it must be something that you already have. You understand, it's the custom. <laughs> I understand, but I, I don't think I got a thing in the world you'd want. Oh, well, I'm sure if we think very hard, we will find something. I did bring an extra buckskin shirt with me. It's got fringe all over it. Becky made it for me. That's Daniel's wife. You'd like her. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think that a shirt would be exactly right, though. Do you? No, I guess not. Well, I ain't got no ring or nothing like that. Ring would make a good keepsake, wouldn't it? Oh, very good. Something that you cherish and carry with you. Well, I'm a doggone if I ain't looked through everything I got, and all I got left is my pack. Yes, and your guitar. My guitar? You cherish that? Yeah. But you wouldn't want no big old guitar. Oh, no, no. It's, of course, much too valuable for you to part with. Well, it's not that. It's just that you don't connect up ladies and guitars, you know. I mean, I'd be glad for you to have it, but... Oh, no, no. It's much too valuable. <laughs> well, it's not as valuable as our friendship. Oh, no. No, absolutely no. Oh, I'd just be proud if you'd accept it and take care of it and maybe think of me once in a while when you look at it. Well, there is that. I could keep it tuned for you until we meet again. Sure you could. You, Jeannie, please. Please say you'll keep it as a keepsake. Well, only if you will accept this from me. I'll cherish that as long as I live. Now, now, you wait right here, and I'm going to go get the guitar. <laughs> Miss Joni, come back with you? She sure did. She's right across the hall. Why? If you'll lie just a minute, I'll tell you something. I'll be right back. Here. He's, he's been a real faithful old friend. You be good to him, he'll be good to you. Oh, you can be sure that I shall. Merci, Josh. <laughs> Josh, we got some talking to do. Anything you say, old friend. Where'd you leave your guitar? Miss Eugenie has got it as a keepsake. You packing already? I thought you said you're going to get a good night's sleep. Josh, some things have happened, and I want us to get an early start first thing in the morning. Not before breakfast, my good friend, because me and Miss Eugenie got an appointment. Josh, sit down. I'm going to do some talking. I want you to just sit there and listen. Now, while you were gone, I had a visitor. Dan, I don't believe it. I don't believe a word of it. There ain't nobody ever going to convince me that that pretty little thing's a thief. I don't care who they are. 
And I can prove it. What did you say that policeman's name was? Roe Land, not that it matters. See? He isn't a policeman. That's her guardian. The one that's been trying to steal her inheritance. I can prove it. Come on. You see how wrong you are. That's funny. Eugenie, it's me! She ain't here. Wherever she went, she wasn't too interested in taking her keepsake with her. Have you found the pendant? Well, no, we didn't. Embassy! We haven't done any good following her. Why bring the girl, then? Remove the handkerchief. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Well, my girl, our first meeting since you left the ship at the wharf without the courtesy of saying goodbye to us. I will make her talk, Chief. You hear Lemouche? No subtlety at all. But one must say of him that he enjoys his work. Now let us be done with all this foolishness. Amela at the hotel is ready with the money. And you tell us what you have done with the pendant. Ten thousand dollars, forty thousand francs. Enough to make you independent for life here in the new world. That is not enough for you. You had to steal from your own friends. From me! who took you from the gutters of Calais and made a lady of you very well. Even my considerable patience is at an end. If you harm me, you will never see the pendant. <laughs> Empty words. Our good friend Lemouche could make the Sphinx talk, I believe. <laughs> mm, I see you believe me. You know that I'm a man of my word. You will not leave here alive unless you tell us where you have hidden the pendant. And after I tell you, then what? Your freedom. And my share of the sale. Of all the nerve. 10,000 francs. A gift for all time's sake. And consider yourself lucky. I will deduct the 10,000 francs from my share. And not one centime more, Eugenie. Very well. I applaud your good sense. Well, I don't believe it. I just can't. I mean, after all, she was raised in a convent, Dan. I, I don't mean that I don't believe you. But she told me that her guardian was doing his best to steal her inheritance. Including pretending to be a police officer. Now, come on, Judge. It's the Americans. They're in my room. If he were her guardian, why would he want to pretend to be somebody else in another thing? Where is she? Where did she disappear to? I don't know. Right now, I don't know much of anything. I will get rid of him, but let me go in alone. Eh bien, but remember, no tricks. All right. All right. You get that police to tell me that himself, and I'll believe it. I'll do that the first thing in the morning. Oh, Chipou and Josh. What a surprise. Where you been? Oh, well, I, I was out. Uh, now I'm back. You know, while you were gone, that fellow you said was your guardian, <laughs> he came over here and told Daniel he was a policeman. Miss Joan A., Captain Rooklin paid me a visit tonight. Now, normally, we don't go poking our noses into matters that are not our concern, but you've kind of made this into our business by involving Josh. So I think we're entitled to know what's going on. Oh. Uh, well. You're right, Monsieur Boone. I did lie to you. Yes, Rockin is of the police and not my guardian. 
I say that only because even now I cannot bear to think I'm a criminal. I'm Monsieur am of the French upper class. And when my poor father and mother died, I was left penniless to bring up a younger brother. All that we had went to pay the death duties, and only one thing left my mother's diamond pendant. The Chilene pendant. Oui. That was to be my dowry. And my brother fell in with the bad companions, and uh, in order to save himself from going to prison, sold my pendant to a minister of the king. This was without my knowledge. Uh, so I stole it back. There was no other way to get it. And I fled to America. Oh, monsieur, legally, I am a thief. Morally, that is my story. Well, I believe you. And I'll just be doggone if that makes you a thief. I mean, after all, it was her property, Daniel. Um, Captain Rockland said that the pendant was stolen from the royal collection. Oh, oui, but in France, monsieur, everything ends up in the royal collection. Well, what do you intend doing with the pendant? Well, I didn't know. I, I, I did not even think. Well, Daniel, you believe her now? I can see that your friend is still in doubt, Monsieur Josh. And I can understand why. Well, he doesn't know you like I do. Ah, oh, you're so very kind to me, Monsieur Josh. Uh, but under the circumstances, I think it would be best if you should retain your guitar. Well, it's your keepsake. Yes? Mademoiselle Jeanette, this is the police. Open the door. Oh, oh, moment. Take it back, George. It's much too valuable for me. Ah, Monsieur Boone, we meet again. Uh, this gentleman, your companion? Josh Clement. Captain Roquelin, Paris Police. Them two, they police too? They are, Monsieur. <laughs> oh, yes, I understand. Uh, there was a slight... Uh, Altercation. Well, there wasn't nothing slight about it. The interrupted was more like it. Why wasn't they in uniform before? We do not wish to advertise our presence, monsieur. Theft from the government is a matter of some embarrassment. But now, this is an official visit. You understand. An interrogation of Mademoiselle Jeunet. Well, monsieur, you will wish to return to your room. It is late. You sure you don't want this for a keepsake? Uh, we'll discuss it later, Josh. Good night, monsieur. If you need me for anything... Uh, good night, Josh. The pendant. And do you have the 10,000 francs? The pendant. Quickly. Of course. We looked there. We went through all the drawers. Ah, but you did not look above. It's gone. It's not there. Someone is taking it. She lies. It was never there. This is where I put it. But I do not. Yes. You have thought of something. No one else has been in this room except... Except the Americans. Now let us end this farce. Not only the Americans, Rocklin. Also these two. Yes, and we found nothing. Yes, but what was to prevent them from finding the pendant where I hid it and keeping it for themselves? Yes, the point is very well taken. What was to prevent you from doing just that, Thibault? Don't you see what that gutter snipe is trying to do? She's trying to turn you against us. How could you believe it? Where it is a matter of the Cellini, I can believe anything or nothing. However, had you stolen it, 
which has occurred to you, I'm sure one time or another, had you stolen it, you would have never brought the girl to me. You would have, my good Thibault, ordered Lemouche to strangle her and dispose of the body. No, you must believe me. I did not trick you. No, you did not trick us when you ran from the ship or ran from these two or told fairy tales to the Americans or lied when we finally caught you. I told you, you should have let me have her. Lemouche is right. I should have let him have you. But you wouldn't, you couldn't, Rocklin. One hour ago, perhaps I couldn't, but now I can. And I shall enjoy it. No! I will scream! I will rob the hotel and tell him that you're not the police! <laughs> Since the owner of the hotel is himself a receiver of stolen goods, I do not think it will matter. But please do scream, if it will make you feel better. One scream is all a mush will permit, I imagine. <laughs> No, you keep him away from me. You've got to believe me, Rockhill. You've got to. I, I did not lie to you. I showed you where I put the pendant. Attendez, Lemouche. Then who removed it? The nosy American, the one she calls Josh. No. No, it, it was the hotel proprietor. More lies. He's buying the pendant. Why would he? Why not? Why pay 400,000 francs for something if you can get it for nothing? Thibault, get him up here. Ma bien sûr. You have much to answer for, Virginie. You better pray that we find the pendant. Gauclin, who would I steal from you? Why not? If you knew I had the pendant? No, no. He lies. He would steal the eyes from his own mother for gain. Lemouche, make him talk. She is the one who lies. Believe me. Silence! You knew that she had stolen it from us. You knew that when she came here, she was hoping to make a separate deal with you. But she never approached me, I swear. Don't let him hurt me. Don't let him hurt me. Lemouche, let him go. You believe him? Thank you for your faith in me. I have faith only in her greed and in your cowardice, which in your case outweighs her greed. I have no dignity. I steal, I overcharge, I lie. But when it comes to fear, I am a man of complete honor. Please, Rockland, tell him to get out. I'm getting sick. Bon. Allez-vous en. Thank you. Thank you. It was unkind of you to accuse me of betrayal. I go, I go. Now what? I have been thinking. Perhaps we have been underestimating our little protege. She was extremely anxious to get rid of the bumpkin's guitar. Can you think of a better hiding place? Monsieur Clemens, open the door. It is the police. Open the door, police! I'm coming, I'm coming. I regret the inconvenience, monsieur. Your friend, uh, where is he? I don't know, he's not here. What do you want me for? What are you doing with her? It will be necessary for you to accompany us to the prefecture. What? The police station. We will not keep you there long. We are still not satisfied with her story. Perhaps you will be able to clarify matters. Le mouche de guitare. Well, what do you want with a guitar? Evidence, monsieur. Please get dressed and hurry. Inside, quickly. This don't look like no... I was right, you're not police. Bravo, Monsieur Clemens. You're not her guardian either. Heaven forfend, no, Monsieur Clemens. Call a seeker after truth. 
Wouldn't Seeker of the Pendant be a little more like it? I don't know where it is. Ask her. She'll tell you. Hmm. The young lady's most reticent on many points, monsieur. Chief among them, of course, the whereabouts of the pendant. It is my thought that you have been closer to it than you realize, if indeed you are the innocent you would have us believe. Now, why don't you cut out all that fancy talk and tell me what I'm doing here and what you want with my guitar? The answer to the first question will depend to a great extent on the very instrument, American. Le mouche, the guitar. it would be. I confess my hopes were high. Was it there? Rockland, your hunch was right. But somebody beat you to it. Her. No. No, I swear. I did lie to you before. I put it in the guitar, not the chauffeur, but I did not remove it. I could not. There was no time. You must have really had your fun making a fool out of me. Keepsake. A boob. What a flop-eared, ox-headed boob I am. Rockland, I say it again. It's her. Nobody else could have known it was in the guitar. Nobody else had the chance to take it out. Your logic is irrefutable, my dear Thibault. <laughs> Looks like a case of the biter gets bit, doesn't it? You stole the pendant, she stole it from you, and now somebody stole it from her. No, American. She merely removed it from one hiding place to another. All roads lead to her. No. I swear. Of course you would do anything, but you have tried wool once too often. I will give her one minute to tell us where the pendant now is. <laughs> No, Josh, don't let them do this to me. Ten seconds gone. Twenty seconds. Tell your lucky to hand me his gun. I shall count to three, then I will fire. You may even live a few hours, Rockland, in exquisite agony. Thibault, do as she says. Thibault, you and your little friend over there. Good girl, you two. You two. Over with the others. Over there with the others. Now you turn around very slowly. You are right, backwards. You are, a, what do you call it? A boob. A fitting title for you. All this will be for naught. We will cut you down. Indeed, Rockland. The new world is a big place. And when I find the pendant, and I shall, because I now know who must have it, I shall be swallowed up as though I never existed. Au revoir, Bumpkin Josh.
Josh, I knew that you would come. You have no idea how glad I am to see you. All those terrible things that I said to you last night. Of course, I didn't mean a word of it. But you know that, don't you? Of course he knows that, ma petite. Oh, but I had to say those things to make him believe that you and I had had a... How do you say, a... A lover's quarrel, no? I was afraid for you. They would stop at nothing. Look at them, those animals. Oh, you know that I will never be anything but grateful to you. And I will show you what my gratitude means once you get the keys. Hurry, my Josh, my gallant Josh. But be ever so quiet so you do not wake up. The Claude was sleeping so soundly there. Then we will get to know each other. Really know, Josh. Hurry, my darling. Hurry. Oh, I'd, I'd really like to get to know you. Just as soon as you get out. Satin piped, I heard him sing Praise of Orlee Orlee, Orlee Made of golden hair Sunshine Swallows in the air. Daniel, what made you think she hid that pendant in my guitar? Oh, nothing special, Josh. Everything in general. Caught her looking at it once when she didn't know I was watching. I reckon she seemed almost too good to be true. I didn't know what I was looking for or what I was going to do with it when I found it, but... I kind of had a hunch it was going to be valuable. I thought I was a goner. D do you think she'd have really pulled that trigger if I'd have grabbed that gun? I'm sure glad you didn't try finding out. Dan, what do you really think of me? I mean, deep down. Well, uh, I think you're uh, slow to anger. But once you get mad, look out. Friendly, generous. Stupid, dumb, green. It's a green I could hide in short grass. Better men than you have been fooled by girls not half as smart as that girl back there in New Orleans. Maybe next time you'll be luckier. You might as well just forget it. It could have happened to anybody. It could have happened to me. But it didn't. It never does. And why, if you ain't smarter than I? Well, like I say, maybe I was just luckier than you, Josh. After all, I did get Rebecca to marry me. Although sometimes I can't really figure out why she did. Daniel, one more thing. That fella... Uh... The one that caused all the trouble. Benvenuto who? Benvenuto who?